Hello everyone. This video would focus on conic sections, specifically on hyperbola with center at 0, 0 or at the point of origin. And this is the third part. In this part, we're supposed to determine the standard equation of a hyperbola where given the coordinates of the two vertices and the endpoints of the conjugate axis. Before we move farther, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to hyperbola with center at 0, 0. Now, before we jump into this example that we have right here, let's have a review on the parts and the two cases of a hyperbola with center at 0, 0. Please notice that this hyperbola is called the horizontal hyperbola because the graph, which is in red, which is the hyperbola, is touching the horizontal axis. Now, these are the parts. The first part is the center. The center is located at 0, 0 or at the point of origin. Another part is the vertex. There are two of them. We call them as vertices. Another part is the transverse axis. The transverse axis is the line that connects the two vertices passing through the center. Another part is the covertex, and there are two of them. We call them as covertices. Another part is the conjugate axis. This is the line connecting the two covertices passing through the center. The next part is the focus. There are two of them. We call them as foci. Please remember that the focus is located to the side where the hyperbola or the branch of the hyperbola opens. Another part is the latus rectum. This is the line segment with endpoints on the hyperbola and it passes through the focus. And there are two of them for each side. The next part are the asymptotes. These are the two lines that form an X shape where the hyperbola approaches but never touches it. We call them again as asymptotes. The equation of the asymptote with a negative slope is Y equals negative B over A X, while the other asymptote with a positive slope is Y equals B over A X. Now, the easiest way to draw the asymptote is by drawing a rectangle covering the four points, the two vertices and the two covertices. And the two asymptotes are actually the diagonals of these rectangles extending outward of the rectangle. So that's the trick on how to approximately draw the two asymptotes. Now, let's look at some important lengths of hyperbola. The first is... The distance from the center to the vertex is represented as letter A. The distance from the center to the covertex is represented as letter B. While the distance from the center to the focus is represented as letter C. From here, we can go ahead and say that the length of the transverse axis that is from one vertex to the other vertex is a formula of 2a, while the length of the conjugate axis that is from one covertex to the other covertex is 2b. Now, the equation that relates all these three lengths here, a, b, and c, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We also have another quantity called eccentricity. Eccentricity is defined as the measure of how oval the hyperbola is. And the formula for the eccentricity is C over A. Now we remember that eccentricity for a hyperbola is always greater than 1. Now the standard formula for a horizontal hyperbola is X squared over A squared minus Y squared over B squared equals 1. Now please notice this. Since our A is on the horizontal axis, we therefore placed it under the X squared. And since our vertex is on the horizontal axis, the X squared over A squared is positive. Now let's look at the second case of a hyperbola, which is the vertical hyperbola. In the vertical hyperbola, we still have the same parts. And the equation of the asymptote with a negative slope is y equals negative a over bx, 
Well, the one with a positive slope is y equals a over b x. We also have these lengths in a vertical hyperbola. We also remember that the standard formula for a vertical hyperbola is y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Now, please notice that our vertex is on the vertical axis. That's the reason why our A is under the Y. Remember, Y means up or down. And that's the reason why the A squared is located under the Y squared. Now, we also remember that our Y squared over A squared is positive because this is a vertical hyperbola. So these are the parts, the two cases, and the equations of a hyperbola with center at 0, 0, or at the point of origin. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So we are given the coordinates of the two vertices that is located at 0, 3. So that would be at uh, 0, 3. This is one um, vertex right here. So I'm going to label this as V. And the other vertex is at 0, negative 3. So it's going to be down here. That's the other vertex. Now we are also going to sketch or plot the points for the endpoints of the conjugate axis. So that is located at 4, 0. So this is 4, 0 right here. That is... Um, this is the other uh, end point, which is at negative 4, 0. Now, we remember that the end points of the conjugate axis are actually the co-vertices. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. Now, looking at this, since our vertex is, or these two vertices are located along the vertical line, we can go ahead and say that this type of hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. We also remember that the center of the hyperbola is the midpoint between the two vertices or the midpoint between the two co-vertices or the midpoint between the two foci. So in this case right here, we can use the midpoint formula to determine the midpoint between these two vertices and the midpoint between these two co-vertices. Just by looking at this and counting it, we can go ahead and say that our center is actually at 0, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and label that up here. Now, looking farther, we remember that the distance from the center to the vertex is represented as letter A. In this case right here, our A would be, we can go ahead and count it, 1, 2, 3. Our A is 3. Well, our B is the distance from the center to the co-vertex. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And that would be 4 right there. So that we can go ahead and write the general equation of the vertical hyperbola up here. So this is the general formula for a vertical hyperbola. So what are we going to do is we plug the values in. Our A is 3 and our B is 4. So this is how the equation is going to look like. So this is the equation of this word problem that we have up there. So that we can go ahead and draw the rectangle that would help us draw the asymptote and that would help us draw the hyperbola later on. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that rectangle right here. We remember that the rectangle should cover the two vertices and should cover also the two co-vertices. And we're going to draw the diagonal extending outward of the rectangle and that would be the asymptote of the hyperbola. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that up here. Okay, now let's determine the equation of these two asymptotes. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. There are two asymptotes. We're going to write the ones with a negative slope first. So what we would do is we go up and over. So that would be y equals, we go up 1, 2, 3. So that is 3 over 
one, two, three, four. It's gonna be a negative four because we went to the left and we put X next to it. So this is the equation of this um, asymptote. Now the other asymptote which has a positive slope would be Y equals, we go up three and then one, two, three, four. So that would be three over four X. So these are the equations of these two asymptotes. From here, we can also determine the length of the transverse axis and the length of the conjugate axis. I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. Okay, so the length of the transverse axis is 6 and the length of the conjugate axis is 8. Now let's sketch the hyperbola. So this is the hyperbola for this word problem right here. And this is the graph of this equation that we have right here. Now we are going to determine the location of the focus. The focus is located C distance from the center. So we go ahead and solve for C using the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. Our C value is plus minus 5. That means from the center, we go up 5 and 5 down. So this is our first focus. And this is the other focus down here. So I'm going to go ahead and write the coordinates of the two foci down here. So remember that the formula for eccentricity is E equals C over a, our C here is 5, and then our A here is 3, so our eccentricity is 5 over 3. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own, and when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Since we have here the coordinates of the two vertices, I'm going to go ahead and plot these two points. And we remember that the endpoints of the conjugate axis are actually the co-vertices. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch these four dots right here on this graph. Okay, since our vertices are actually horizontal with respect to each other, we can go ahead and say that this is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. Now we remember that the center of a hyperbola is the midpoint between the two vertices or the midpoint between the two co-vertices or the midpoint between the two foci. So looking at this, we can go ahead and say that the center for this hyperbola is at zero, zero. So I'm going to go ahead and label that up here. Okay, now we also remember that the distance from the center to the vertex is represented as letter A. From here, we can go ahead and say that is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the distance from the center to the co-vertex is represented as letter B. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can go ahead and write the general equation of a horizontal hyperbola here. And this is how it's going to look like. Since we already have the A and the B, we will plug them in here and write the standard equation of this hyperbola. Now let's draw the rectangle and the two asymptotes using these two points of the two vertices and the two co-vertices. Okay, the equation of the asymptote with a negative slope would be, I'm going to go ahead and write y equals, we go up and over. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is 5 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be negative 6 because we went to the left, and that is x. And the other one would be y equals, we go up 
five and one, two, three, four, five, six to the right, which is positive. So that is five over six X. So these are the equations of these two asymptotes. Now let's determine the length of the transverse axis and the length of the conjugate axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here. So the length of the transverse axis is 12 and the length of the conjugate axis is 10. Now let's sketch the hyperbola. Now let's determine the location of the focus. Again, we remember that the focus is C distance from the center. So we go ahead and determine that value for C using the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. Okay, so our first focus is located 7.81 steps to the left. So that would be 5, 6, 7.81 should be somewhere around here. So this is the first focus and the other focus will be 7.81 to the right. So that is 5, 6, 7.81. That should be somewhere around here. So this is the second focus. So that we can go ahead and say that the coordinates of the two foci would be Okay, now let's determine the eccentricity. Now we remember that eccentricity is C over A. Our C here is square root of 61. And then our A is 6. So this is the eccentricity of this hyperbola. Did you get the same answers as this? Yay! Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.